So to begin with, what I have done is I've actually drawn out all of the base, the back and the two sides. So please feel free to pause the video and grab those measurements. And then I'm just using some coffee stir sticks. So these are about five millimeters or a quarter of an inch wide and they're quite long. And then I'm just using my mitre shears to actually cut through the coffee stir stick. Just gluing these into a rectangle and then this is going to create the foundation of the little outhouse. For this back, uh, this is the back piece here and the sides will be the same so I've just actually just cut those coffee stir sticks in half and so they're only about 2 to 2.5 millimeters um, or an eighth of an inch across and so these floorboards are also the same half size as well so I'm just going to start with the base and actually just glue them down right next to each other and I'm just going to work my way across so I'm going to try and get as many across onto the base as possible just to make sure that I can get the as long as I can get the scale looking as I want it. So using uh, my one two three blocks I'm just going to use this as sort of some right angles so starting off with the base and I'm just going to push that up against one of the one two three blocks and then I'm going to grab another one and just pop it at right angles so just to make sure that I'm getting this as square as possible and then just starting with the back I'm just going to glue that into place and then I'm going to start gluing in the sides. So the sides themselves, the front part of the side is higher than the back and that's just so that I, we can get a full size door on the front but it's actually not taking up too much room in the project and actually most of them are actually built that way anyway. Um, I'm just putting a little bit of support across the very front just so that those two side walls don't sort of start to bend in on each other and that's what it's starting to look like, the frame of the little outhouse. So just before I go too much further and build in all of the walls, what I want to do is actually create the little toilet part of it, or the little long drop part of it, and I'm just going to use a bit of cardboard to do that, just because it's really easy to cut out some shapes, and I'm using a smoothie straw just to kind of bulk out, and well, mainly just to kind of... Uh, Instead of having to paint up all of the inside of it black, I can just paint up the small part of the inside of the straw and that way you won't see down into, actually into the toilet, into the long drop. So anyway, um, so yeah, I just, uh, just painting up on the inside of it and then I'll end up by gluing that into place. And that's what it looks like there, so the little long drop piece or the seat is glued into place. Now I can start working on the exterior. So just using those cut in half coffee stir sticks again and then I'm just going to, I've just cut a whole lot to the same length and I'm just going to go through and glue those onto the outside. So I've kind of glued them, I've kind of cut them longer just so that I can once the glue is dry I can come back and actually cut them to the right length rather than trying to cut them to the right length and then gluing them into place if that makes sense. It just made uh, a bit more sense to do it this way especially at the scale um, and then I could make sure that I've got the right lengths happening. So then I'm just going to do the same on the back and then once I've cut those ones down then I can actually add in the roof as well. So it's really starting to come together and especially on the inside it's sort of looking like a timber framed structure which is great. For the door I've just basically glued a whole lot of those half coffee stir sticks together and then I'm just putting some cross braces on it just to make it look a little bit more authentic. Uh, and that's what she's starting to look like. So I'm pretty happy with where it's at. It's all starting to really just take shape so that glue on the back now is dry so I can clip off those long extra pieces and then I can add on the roof. So these ones have all cut to the right length and they will hang over a little bit on the on all sides actually so I've specifically cut them to the right length for that. So 
I specifically cut those to the right length, which is absolutely makes the makes my job really easy. And it, the project comes together really nice and quickly by doing it this way, by just cutting them all to this to the right length. And there we go. And then once that's fully dry, then I can actually add in a little bit more detail. So these were some extra shingles that I have left over from the little roof on the awning and I'm going to use these to cover the roof as well just to kind of tie it into the little cottage so these are the same shingles that I've got on the little veranda roof So once that's all glued into place and pretty much dry, I'm just going to use a pair of scissors and cut off all of the excess around just to kind of tidy it all up. And that's what it's starting to look like. Now I can go ahead and start painting it. I'm just going to use some watered down brown paint as a bit of a wash because I really want to see some of that wood grain come through. So I'm just using that. And then while the paint is still wet, I'm just going to grab a little bit of black or watered down black and just sort of start to add some bits on sort of paint on the bottom and just let the water allow it to bleed through and then I can um, sort of do that on the door and then also around on the little long drop as well just to kind of give it a little bit more age um, and a little bit more weathering and then for the roof I'm just going to put over a little bit of brown just over the black just sort of a bit of a heavy sort of dry brush because uh, I still want a bit of that black shadows to come through so I can really see all of the different shingles. For the roll of toilet paper, I'm actually using some real toilet paper. I've just split it down to one ply and I'm just cutting a very narrow strip uh, all the way along one sheet. And then I'm just adding a little bit of glue and I've got this little needle pokey tool thing um, which I'm just going to use in the middle and just going to glue that down and on the very center and then just roll it all the way through and then I'll add a little bit of glue at the very end just to hold it into place. I just kind of eyeballed this to kind of get a rough idea of how um, big the roll of toilet paper needs to be and it seems to look okay. Yeah, it seems to be all right. And then just gluing that into place. And then I'm just going to add a bit of glue. I'm just going to sit it on the side of the long drop, just sitting next to it. I thought about doing a little toilet roll holder, but actually just having it sitting on the side is probably how it would have sat anyway. And then I'm just going to glue the tail of the toilet paper down um, as if it's got a little bit of gravity holding it. So that's the little toilet paper finished and then all I need to do now is add on the door. I will add a bit of hardware and a handle and I'm just going to use that out of a bit of black uh, card stock. Can't really have a duck cottage without uh, and ducks in the pond without a whole heap of duck poo. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing here is actually just using a bit of white uh, yellow ochre and a mix of sort of green and black paint and I'm just using a tiny ball stylus and I'm just using that to kind of dot it all the way through. So I'm going to do this on the deck, uh, a little bit around the yard and then also on top of the outhouse deck kind of area or at least the, that part there and so this was actually quite a lot of fun to do. So to finish off the garden I am going to add in a little bit of a path and I'm just using a bit of brown paint to add in some mud effect and just kind of give it a little bit like of a walking path to the actual long drop. Mm -hmm. 
And then I'm also going to start to add in a little bit more greenery around the long drop as well as adding a little bit of garden onto the little slope there as well. I've got a creeper that goes up the side of the long drop just to kind of make it really look like it's been there for a long time and sort of really starting to build it into the garden area. I will be adding some greenery to the side of the house. I'm probably going to wait until I've done the interior lighting before I go ahead and do that so that I can actually glue the house into place before I add any weathering to the house because it's still looking very very clean. So I'm just going to continue on and add some more greenery to the garden here as well as some sort of creepers that fall down the side just like I've done on the other side of the garden. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. This is kind of coming almost to the end of the exterior. Like I say, I've still got the house to do. But if you've liked this video, consider hitting that like button. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. There'll be more of the Duck Cottage to come as I look to complete it. And until next time, everybody, I'll see you then. Bye for now.